Being unceremoniously ejected from your band via fax would leave a bitter taste in anyone's mouth. Yet Kim Deal's response to the disillusion of the Pixies was simple. She created a platinum-selling masterpiece. Pulling together the second incarnation of The Breeders and aided by veteran producer Mark Freegard, Deal created Alternative Rock's very own Pocket Symphony with Last Splash. Recorded primarily at Coast Recorders in San Francisco in the winter of 1993, the album was the product of four grueling months of tracking, scrapping, revisions and reworkings. Deal attacked the sessions with manic creative energy and relentless perfectionism. And with few, if any, creative limitations, it threw logic and commercial caution to the wind, resulting in an album that was audacious, irreverent and beguilingly warm. Her creative vision required an all-wave production method that employed no digital recording techniques. As Freeguard remembers, she wouldn't even consider using a computer for the sessions. Rather, everything was recorded to tape, a process she has ostensibly hung on to ever since. One of the defining elements of Last Splash is the churning distortion persistent from start to finish. Much of the rhythm guitar was recorded on a Seagull acoustic, run into a 100 watt Marshall JCM 900 and often doubled using a gold top Les Paul reissue into a Vox or a Strat through a Boss DS1 into a Roland JC120. The acoustic guitar was the key though and Deal was very particular about how the EQ on the Marshall was set. Deal also tinkered incessantly with the vocal effects on the album, again using distortion to get tones she envisioned. The iconic opening to hit single Cannonball was achieved by singing into a distorted harmonica mic and the vocal on flip side was the result of Freeguard being tasked by making it sound like a bad cassette. This imbued a garagey feel to the album, contrary to the slick production sought by many of the band's contemporaries. That being said, Deal wasn't entirely satisfied with the small room and dry sound at Coast Recorders. However, she and Freeguard did find something alluring about working within the studio's toilet facilities, which were used regularly for some of the album's ambient aspects, alongside an Eventide 3500 for some distortion. You can hear this technique on Mad Lucas, which features a guitar run through a tiny speaker, re-recorded in the toilet. Freeguard also recorded Deal singing into a grand piano, to achieve a reverberated effect, which he remembers as sounding particularly strange due to the resonances from the piano wires. Studio trickery aside, Last Splash is nothing if not grounded with a driving, relentless rhythm section. Deal favoured either a 62 Fender P bass or Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray into an Ampeg SVT or PV Combo 300. Bass guitars were plugged straight into the desk, then layered with what was recorded from the amps. In Deal's own words, this was to create the sound of something thin and something thick. Famously, the sound of Kelly Deal sewing a quilt for her mother also made its way onto Last Splash. As a salute to the knitting traditions of the Deal family, sounds from the machine were run through a cranked Marshall. This can be heard on the raucous instrumental track SOS. What's your favourite track from the Breeders' Last Splash? Let us know.